Welcome to Jackie's Craft Table. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me. I have Spellbinder's July card kit on my desk. This month's kit is called Vintage Mementos, and I'm going to be crafting up 10 cards with this kit. But let's show you what's inside first. Here is the contents page. This also gives you some inspiration, some ideas on how to use this kit. The stamp set is all about these cute little birds and nests and eggs and feathers. In every kit, you always get some foam squares and adhesive tape. You also get 10 card bases and 10 envelopes. These card bases are really nice because they have kind of a linen texture to them. The pack of sequins this month is a mixture of fuchsia and transparent pink. They're so beautiful. The set of dies comes with four dies, and it makes this cute frame. And then they've included something unique this time. You get the set of chipboard frames. They have adhesive on the back. Some of them are square, and then there are a few that look like little Polaroid pictures. Thought those were so cute. Next up are the memory cards. These are always fun to play with. You can use them, of course, for scrapbooking. But they're perfect for card crafting too. I'm going to flip through these so you can see all of the cute ones included. My idea of scrapbooking is just putting pictures in a book. <laughs> I don't do any beautiful layouts like I see some ladies do. My heart just belongs to card crafting <laughs> these days. And I had to stop at this one because look how cute. It's a little postcard. I just love that one. And they're great for sentiments, too. There's a lot of fun sentiments in this pack. Here are the die-cut shapes, and I'll show you those in just a minute. You get more chipboard stickers this time. These coordinate really well with the stamps. And then one of my favorite things, of course, is always the pad of paper. And I'm going to flip through the designs for you. I am never disappointed with these pattern paper pads. But they're just all old fashioned and vintagey looking. I had a lot of fun with the paper. And I love text block paper like that one. A lot of them have gold foiling details on them. I really like that they're thin weight too because you can layer them really nicely on your cards. You get nine pieces of cardstock. I love their craft cardstock, that first one I put down. You get a piece of gold metallic cardstock, which is always fun. And then all of these other beautiful colors. Now let's get into the die cut shape pack. I'm going to do it kind of different this month. I'm going to pull them out and I'm just going to spread them all out on my work mat. I'm going to speed up the video or else we would be here all day. There's so many of them. You always get two of each shape. And again, you get lots of birds and feathers and cute little eggs. I love the florals this time. So the kit has a very vintagey style to it, like it says in the name of the kit. And I'll admit that this card kit was a little more challenging for me. I don't often make vintage type cards. But I still had a lot of fun putting these cards together. And I hope you enjoy my designs. There are a lot of sentiments which I really liked. I made up a lot of birthday cards this time, which is something that I always need in my stash. And as usual, I have a lot of product left over after making 10 cards. When I create my 10 cards, I use just what's provided in the kit. I really love their adhesive tape, but for the sake of ease of video editing, I used my dot liner a lot. On this first card, however, I am going to show you the adhesive tape. It's a nice strong tape. And I use a craft pick to pull up the release paper. It helps a lot. I have everything mostly cut out. And I'm just going to start building my first card. Most of the time, I like to leave a little bit of a border around my cardstock. My next layer, as you can see, I already stamped on, and I discovered I am horrible <laughs> at coloring in birds. 
I had to do it several times. But I'm just going to use the other side of this pink paper. Don't want to waste it. I'm also going to use a memory card, as you see there. I love the pretty flowers on that. I'm going to put that down flat. I put some adhesive tape on my memory card already, but I should have waited until after I put down my metallic strip of paper. I'm just going to put that diagonally across the front of this. I just needed something to make the butterflies pop a little more so they don't get lost in this pattern. It's so busy. It's pretty, but it's busy. And then I can just round off the corners again. I picked out a few butterflies and a sentiment from the die cut shapes. And I'm going to be popping them up with some foam squares. This is one of those types of cards where you just struggle with it. As you can see here, I'm putting this upside down, <laughs> but I do fix it later. I took this card apart, I'm not kidding you, three or four times <laughs> just to fix it. I'm not going to make you watch all of that, but just know that I do flip this paper right side up here in just a minute. So I use all of the foam squares out of this piece of adhesive first. And then I even use the negative piece of this tape. I just cut it up and put it behind my sentiments or whatever I need. It lasts a long time, it's surprising. And this is going to be a birthday card, as you can see. So, of course, I peel off the release paper and put my sentiment and my butterflies all down. And that's when I notice that it's upside down. So I'll flip that right side up. I really love the colors in this card, and it was inspired by this memory card. That's a great thing about these Spellbinders kits. They're so well coordinated. And then using the foam squares behind these butterflies helps to differentiate them from the background as well. Butterflies really seem to be popular lately in the card crafting world. I've made more butterfly cards this spring than I have in years. <laughs> but they are pretty. And I'm just trying to figure out where to put this last butterfly. I'm using a few sequins around this panel. I really loved the transparent pink ones. I used those the most, I think, this time. And here is my completed card. I always decorate the insides. I usually use die cut shapes and leftover bits of pattern paper or the gold metallic paper. And the kit comes with so many die cut shapes that you might as well use them up. On card number two, I'm going to use another memory card. I loved this peacock picture, but I wanted to color it in, so I'm going to pull out some Copic markers for this. I tried to put the caps down so you can see which colors I'm using. But I will have them listed over at my blog as well, if you're interested. I had to Google what they look like. I mean, I know what they look like, but I needed to know where each color specifically goes. I had a lot of fun coloring this in, and I really love the look of these colors on this, I don't know what you would call it, brown-toned paper, tan paper. But it's nice and thick, This the paper of these memory cards. And it took the color well, so this was just a lot of fun to do. I'm going to speed it up and chop bits out because it'd take me a while to color in. I'm using a light green around the dots on these feathers. And then I come in with a little bit of a darker green just to go up the stem of the feathers. And I didn't color the whole thing in. I allowed some of the brown of the paper to show through. I chose another piece of pattern paper, this beautiful blue pattern. And sometimes I find it easy just to adhere it to my card base first and then chop off the excess rather than pulling out my paper trimmer and trimming it up that way. I used one of the cutting dies to cut out these pretty gold scallops. And I just cut that in half so that I can Put half of it on each side of the card. I didn't need the whole thing. My peacock panel is going to be hiding most of it. With this metallic paper, it does take the liquid adhesive a little bit of time to dry. 
but I just want to have it overlapping the edge just a little bit. I used some foam tape from my stash to put behind this panel. I just want it to pop up a little bit. This panel has a white banner going across the bottom, and I took advantage of this by using one of the die cut shape sentiments, and it fit just perfectly inside this banner. And it even has a cute little white edge around it. I just love that. I'll add a few sequins, and then this card is complete. This one is definitely one of my favorites of the set that I create in this video. On card number three, I'm going to use some Spellbinder dies. This set is from Becca Feacon, and it's called Elegant Twist. These are new in the shop, and I just adore them. <laughs> I'm going to make a frame using these. I learned how to put these dies together like this from watching Tina from Cards and Coffee. I love her videos, but she made the most beautiful frame doing this. So it's just going to cut out the center and the outside of it. There's so much you can do with these dies. But I'll just pull off the purple tape and I save that purple tape and use it over and over. It's so handy. And look how pretty this frame is. And then I can just pop out the bits inside. And then to clean out my cutting dies, I just use the Spellbinders all-in-one tool. It's fabulous. This is new in my craft room, and it's one of those tools that I don't know what I did without this before. It's so handy. I'm also cutting out an inner frame for this, and I cut it out with more of the gold metallic paper. To make this frame stand out a little more from the pink paper, I'm using the brown craft cardstock to cut out a background for it. And then I can just adhere this down with some liquid adhesive. Doesn't that look cute? Now to put this card together. My pink pattern paper will go down first. And I'm going to glue these two pieces together. Next, I'll glue on the little gold detail in this frame. These elegant twist dies also come in squares, rectangles, and ovals. I just love them. I'm going to put a little strip of metallic paper at the bottom, just a fun little detail. Add more interest to the card. And now to adhere my frame. My sentiments for this card comes from the die cut shapes. It's just going to say, for you, with love. And I glue these down flat on the card, but later on I decide to pop them up with some foam adhesive. It just looked a lot better popped up. The butterflies and the bee I'm going to glue down flat. You could put butterflies all the way around your frame, and I think that would just look darling. But I just wanted to keep it a little more simple. Now for my bee. I have such trouble picking it up off my mat. I have to slide it to the edge of my mat to pick it up. And here is a close-up look. I don't show myself putting sequins on most of these cards, but I do use them, I think, on every single card from this kit. Card number four is next, and I'm using another memory card. I love the little hummingbird on this one. It's so cute. And I'm going to use a sentiment from the stamp set. This one says, so many of my smiles begin with you. And I'm going to heat emboss it with some gold embossing powder. I used my anti-static powder bag first. And now I'm just inking it up with some embossing ink. I'm going to pull out a piece of type paper and pour over the gold embossing powder. And I didn't ink it up very well, as you can see here. It didn't stamp out very clearly, but I do that process one more time off camera. I used the cutting dies to cut out more of the gold cardstock, and I'm going to adhere that onto the side of this memory card. Just matched really well with the scallops on the card. And I'm just carefully trimming it off so it 
to round it off so it looks like it matches the top. I'm adhering a piece of pattern paper on the bottom of my card base, as well as a piece of this craft card stock. And the craft card stock you can kind of see looks very well used. I don't know how many times I peeled this off trying to get it just right. You know, you have an idea for something and it just doesn't turn out. So I kept peeling this card apart, this poor card. <laughs> I'm going to hide the seam with a metallic strip of paper. Most of my damaged craft card stock, you can see how rough it looks there, but most of it will be covered up with my memory card and in one particular place a sequin. I popped up this panel with some more foam tape. And that place right there, it needed to be fixed. So I just fixed it with the sequin. Just works out perfectly. I'll add a few more around this cute little bird. I love his coloring too, he's just cute. And then I decide to round two of the corners with a half inch corner chop. And that's all there is to this card. I really love working with Spellbinder's brown craft cardstock. It's just different from any that I've seen. I wish they would put more of it in their kits. Card number five is going to be another distressed card. And I'm not good at distressing, but I really tried hard and I had fun trying new things. I'm using some oval dies from Spellbinders and I cut out a little scalloped oval with another of the memory cards. I'm going to stamp my sentiment right on it. It says, a little bird told me, so cute. I'm going to even tape it into place so it doesn't shift while I stamp it out. I'm also using the little bird stamp. And I'm just stamping this up with some VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. I'm going to add a little bit of distressing with some milled lavender distress oxide ink. I'm blending it onto the edges. I watch Desiree's Include a Thank You channel, and she brings in a lot of vintage photo. It really makes the images on her cards pop. I love watching her. She's so talented. And I wish I had used the vintage photo on this particular card. But I'm just working my way up. I'm just not good at distressing. I'm putting more milled lavender on this piece of pattern paper. It adds a cute touch, I think, but just not enough pop. <laughs> and now to put this card together. I'm going to adhere my pattern paper onto my white card base. I love this polka dot pattern paper, it's so cute. And then I'm going to put a few strips of cardstock on the side of this card. I'll just glue these two together and snip off the excess. I cut it down so it fits perfectly to the pattern paper. And I'm just gluing that down flat. The little bird panel, I'm going to pop up with more foam pieces. But I'm just holding that in place, trying to see where I want to align my strips of paper. And then I found these beautiful peacock feather die cut shapes in the kit. And I glued those down flat. I want this panel to have a little bit of a pink shadow on it. So I adhe adhered it first to another pink scallop and then I can just adhere this onto the front of my card. I really love the little bird stamp image. It's so cute. And this is going to be another birthday card. And here is a close-up peek. The bird image is so cute you don't even need to color it in. <laughs> I used a little more milled lavender and some die cut shapes on the inside. Now, if you watch my YouTube channel videos, you'll know that I love creating my own pattern paper. And that's what I'm going to do with some of these stamps. I'm using a very pale gray ink. And I'm also using a piece of the pale gray cardstock from the kit. I love this stuff. This is kind of a brownish gray ink. I start with my biggest image first, and I just randomly stamp it across this panel. 
I believe this panel is five and a half by four and a quarter, but I do end up chopping it down just a little bit. So you can see the card base peeking behind it. My next image is going to be the feather. And I just put my stamps back. I don't clean them until I'm done stamping. But I put them back just so I don't lose them. And now for the cute feather image. And this turns out so soft and pretty. I just love this effect. It's very subtle. I'm not pressing down too hard, but I want to make sure that all of the stamp gets pressed onto the paper. This next stamping that I do right here, I don't press hard enough. So I'm going to ink it up again and go over that same image. I'm sorry my head gets in the way, but you kind of have to look through the acrylic block to see where to stamp it. The last image is going to be these cute little bird tracks. I'm going to pull out my little teeny acrylic block for this. I just love this acrylic block. And to stamp these little bird tracks around the panel. I like to use smaller stamps just to add lightness and even more interest to the panel. I usually add dots, but these tracks just fit the bill. Ooh, that was a good pun. <laughs> Isn't that gorgeous? So much fun to do. I'm going to use the Thinking of You sentiment and I'm going to stamp it on the gray paper. I like this sentiment because the kit comes with a cutting die that cuts this one out. It also has little bird images at the bottom of it. It's so cute. I'll line that, line that up, and then I'm just going to use a little bit of tape to hold it in place so it doesn't shift when I die cut it. And here it is all cut out. And now to put this card together. This pink cardstock is going to completely cover my card base. And then I decide to bring in my corner chomper again. I'm just using a fourth inch chomp on this one. I already stamped out and colored in my bird image, as you can see there at the top. And as I said, I had to practice several times. I was just not liking the colors that I chose. I colored it in with some colored pencils, and I'm just going to adhere that onto my little gold frame. I also put a piece of gray paper on this gold frame. And now I can adhere down my sentiment. The frame I'm popping up with more foam tape. And this is another very simple card. A lot went into it, but it's very simple looking and pretty. And of course, more sequins. I think this one is one of my favorites as well. On the inside, I just stamped a little bit more. I'll have the colors I used to color in this bird listed over on my blog. It took me a while to figure out which colors to use. I'm using more of the dark red paper for my next card. This card is one of the simplest cards that I create in this video, but I just love how it looks. I really like the look of these multi-layers on this card. I'm going to have to do it more often. It just looks really polished like this. Everything is cut down from my card base an eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to use one of the chipboard frames, and I'm going to pop it up with some foam strips. I'm creating a little window, and I think they always look much nicer when you add dimension to it. I mean, you could glue it down flat and it'll look just fine, but the dimension just adds a little something special to it. I'm going to use another memory card, and I'm just going to use the sentiment from this card. So I'm going to adhere my frame down over the sentiment. You aren't going to see the bird down at the bottom because I'm going to cover that up. Now I'll flip it over and cut off the excess and look how cute those clocks look on the other side. <laughs> I felt bad having to uh, not waste them but not get the opportunity to use those cute little clocks. But oh well, I really liked this sentiment. 
I'll center that at the top of my card. And then I'm using another die cut shape just to put down in the corner. I'll use some liquid glue as well as some foam squares. I just want it to be the same height as my frame. And here is a close up of the finished card. This one is just fun to look at. <laughs> I really like how it turned out. On my next card, I'm using another memory card. I just want it mostly for this sentiment. The pattern paper coordinates perfectly with this birdcage, but I'm not going to use the birdcage on this memory card. I'm going to use the chipboard sticker. And I had a little bit of trouble pulling it off of the acetate. But I eventually get it. <laughs> And then I'm just going to adhere it over the other birdcage. I just wanted to have a little bit of dimension next to my sentiment. And then I can snip off a little more behind my chipboard sticker. And then I'm attempting to do more distressing. As I say, I'm not very good at it. I'm just using some shabby, shabby shutters to go around the edges of this card. You can barely see it, but I had fun doing it anyway. And here we go. Let's put this together. It's a really fast card as well. I always have to make sure my card base is the right way before I start putting things together. And then I'm going to use another strip of the craft card stock. I use up every little bit of this paper. I just love it. And then I'm going to pop up my bird cage and my sentiment with more foam pieces and center that on the craft cardstock. That's pretty much done. I'm just going to add a few sequins and here's a close-up look at it. I use a lot of the die cut shape sentiments on the insides of my cards. So fun. Okay, for my next card I'm going to try and be really brave and do some major distressing to this one. I'm using this piece of purple cardstock that coordinates really well with this piece of pattern paper that you see me ripping here. <laughs> I never do this, but I really enjoy watching card crafters that can do this and distress their cards. It's so much fun. I love how this one turns out. But I ripped the paper so that the white of the inside of the paper kind of shows through, if you know what I mean. And then I have this tool in my stash and I never use it. I should more. It's just going to rough up the edges a little bit. I've seen card crafters also use their scissors to do this. And I probably should have just gone straight to my scissors because this takes a little bit of time and doing. <laughs> and it makes a bit of a mess on my desk. Now I can adhere this down onto my purple cardstock. And it's not roughed up too much, but I'm working on it. <laughs> I'll learn how to distress cards better. I also decided to rip up the purple card stock just to kind of match the diagonal line of the pattern paper. And I also roughed up the edges of the purple card stock. You can't tell, but I did my best. <laughs> the sentiment is a die cut shape. It says life is sweet. And then I'm adding a couple of butterflies and I kind of pulled up the edges of their wings to give it dimension. And now I'm using this pretty die cut shape of flowers to put on the edge. I popped it up with some foam adhesive and then I could just cut off the excess. I'll glue down a few sequins on this card. And here is a close up look. What do you think of my distressing? Did I do okay? <laughs> I gotta practice. Here's the inside. It's another memory card that I cut the sentiment out. On my last card, I just had to use this text block patterned paper. I used the cutting die to cut out a frame from the craft card stock. And then I'm going to stamp the same sentiment that says, so many of my smiles begin with you, right onto this frame. I'm going to use another piece of gray card stock. I'm just going to cover my card base completely. This is another simple card, 
I like how it turned out. I really like the effect of the frame cut out with the craft card stock because the frame cuts out a very beautiful and ornate frame, but the look of the craft card stock juxtaposed with the fanciness just makes me happy to look at. It's just cute. I don't know what it is about it. I'm going to put a few more strips of paper down. It's what I like to do lately. This pink piece almost blends in with the background. That's okay. And then a piece of metallic cardstock. My little frame, I used the last bits of my foam adhesive on. I kind of smudged my sentiment a little bit, but not enough to change it out. And then I chose a few more sentiments from the die cut shapes just to put on the side and I'm going to pop them up with some foam strips. So these will say friend, thankful, and always and forever. They coordinate really well with some of the words in the pattern paper. So if you like creating vintage cards or vintage projects, this kit is definitely for you. I had a lot of fun with it. And as always, I'll have all of the links listed below, as well as over at my blog. Some of the items from this kit you can even purchase separately if you don't want to buy the whole kit. Here's a close-up look at my last card. Thanks for watching, everyone. I always appreciate your wonderful comments and for clicking on the thumbs up button. I hope you were inspired and I hope you all have a wonderful day. I'll be back again soon with another card video. Bye.